Hello and welcome to the first proper video in our Value of Everything Valuation course. If this is the first video you're seeing, I encourage you to visit our website or go to our YouTube channel to find the remainder of the videos in our series and the introductory video. In this simple, quick, uh, short episode or video, we're going to be talking about intrinsic valuation and asymmetric return, two fundamental concepts that you need to understand if you're going to be valuing shares, businesses, or any type of asset in the financial markets. They're, don't worry, they're very easy to understand concepts and I'm going to take you through them step by step so you understand everything there is to know. Okay, let's take them one by one. Intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is also called IV. And basically what it represents is the worth of something. So let's take our shoes, for example, you can't see them, they're out of shot here, but let's say I'm wearing Nike shoes, which I am. I think the shoes are, are worth $150, but I go into a store and I notice that they're on sale for $100. Because they're priced at just $100, but I think they're valued at $150, I'd say they're undervalued and I would buy them. We apply that same concept to the share market or any type of financial market because we believe something is worth, aka valued, greater than the price at which we could buy it for. So let's use a concrete example. Let's say we have a share price that looks like this. This is this purple line here, apologies for the drawing. And then we have some blue lines which represent valuation. Now you probably noticed something already. The blue lines are horizontal. They're not jumping around as much as the share price, right? So there are two reasons for that. When we have a share price, we're valuing, uh, that's a representation of a business. So the share price tells us what we can buy a part of that business for. So let's use another example. Let's say you go down to your local cafe or restaurant and you look at the books. So they give you access to their financial statements, which they've got for a number of years. You talk to management and you talk to employees and suppliers of um, coffee beans and all different types of things. And you come to a valuation of that business. You use maybe like a discounted cash flow or some other type of valuation model, which we'll get to in future episodes. And then you arrive at a valuation. So let's say that we have at this blue line here, where's my blue pen? So let's say that this blue, first blue line here represents $1 on our chart. And you can see that the valuation is increasing over time, but it's much steadier. It's not like this purple line. The reason for that is if we go back to our restaurant or cafe analogy, what we're doing is we're valuing the company at a point in time. So we might value it here and then go back every six months and value it again. Or whenever there is a new piece of news or we change our opinion about the growth of the business. So we don't necessarily go down to a cafe and have to value it every single day because that would be monotonous. It wouldn't make sense because the valuation wouldn't change that much day to day unless there was something catastrophic or major that changed with the business. It's the same principle in the share market. Even though you log into your brokerage account and you see the share price doing this, it doesn't matter because we're talking about the intrinsic worth, the intrinsic value, the true worth of that business doesn't change every day. For example, if I believe these Nikes are worth, I don't know, $150 today, I'm not going to then go into the same store tomorrow and say, no, oh, they're worth $250. It doesn't happen like that. It's not like a share price which bounces around. So let's say we have valued this share at $1 and we can see the share price in purple here. It goes up through our price target, which is another word for intrinsic value or IV, it goes through our price target and then it stays above it. Then we revalue it higher again, then it goes down below and then stays below as we revalue it up again and again and again. So whenever you hear someone say something is undervalued, what we're looking for is this right here. We're looking for where we can see the price is below the value. So price is below the value. We say it is undervalued because we could buy the shares for say, this is around about a dollar at this point in time. We could buy them for a dollar, but we probably think they're worth around about, I don't know, $1.40 let's say. So in a sense, we're saying at this point right here, right here, we're saying that we can buy the shares for 40 cents cheaper than what we actually think they're worth. So, and then we could do the same again here, even though in this patch here, the share price is continuing to run up, as they might say, you can see that the valuation increases again. So this time it might be, say, $1.70. I'm just making these numbers up as I go. But you can see, even though the share price is rising, the value of this business is going up until it hits a point over here, right here, where the 
valuation matches the price or the worth matches the price. This would be like my Nike shoes going up from $100 to $150, which is what I think they're worth. That is what we would call a fair price or fair value. So at this point in time, we say maybe they're not a buy and maybe they're not a sell, but they're kind of just fine to be at that price. We have no reason to buy them, no reason to sell them. But what you notice happens after this point is right at the end of the chart here, we have a situation where the shares could be overvalued. And that's because we're comparing price here in the purple up the top, and we're comparing value down below. And we're saying that the shares are overpriced or they're overvalued because the price is above value. They're overvalued. You get it? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for occasions where we can buy a share which is undervalued down here where the value is above the price or the price is below the value. And then we can sell them at something like this up here. Now, one subtlety which you may or may not know already, um, although we talk about price and value as being two different things, most novice investors make the mistake of thinking that the value doesn't change. So even though their share price goes up, they think, oh, well, maybe I should sell now. That is not what you should take your cues from. What you should be taking your cues from is the relationship between value and price. And as you can see in this chart here, this would be a wonderful investment to make even right back at the start here because the value of the shares have gone up. Even though the price has gone up, yes, that's great, that's how we make money, the value has gone up. So we're not in a rush to sell. Focus on value, focus on the relationship between price and value. Now, the last one, which is asymmetric return, is going to be much easier for us to understand. So let's say that we have a horizontal line, which we do, and anything above this line is a profit, and anything below the line is a loss. Now, I've probably drawn that a little bit higher, but we'll get to it in a second. So let's say that I offer you the opportunity to buy a share in a company. Let's say it's a company and it has a $100 share price. So that's right in the middle of this line. So $100 is where this line is. Let's just to make it very clear. This is $100. The shares are priced at $100. Now let's say I have the share and I tell you it could be worth $110 or $90 in one year from now, meaning that it could go down here or it could go up here and we make more money. So here's the assumption that I'm making. I'm saying that both of these are equally likely. So there's a 50% chance you'll get, not, you'll have a $90 share in a year from now and a 50% chance you'll have $110 share from now, a year from now. So if you're looking at this, you're thinking, okay, if I flip a coin, heads, I make $10 because that's how much it goes up. Um, if it lands on tails and I lose, then I lose $10. So I'm making $10 or I'm losing $10. And it's an even split, right? Would you take this bet? Chances are you wouldn't, or at least I hope you said that you wouldn't because they're equally likely, right? We've calculated, and I'm telling you this because it's making things easier. I'm telling you that in a year from now, this share is either going to be priced or worth $90 or 110. And it's equally likely, there's a 50% chance that you'll make or lose $10. In this case, if you know your maths, and I won't bore you to death with the academic side of things, but you can do a, a, a mathematical equation here and you can work out that this asset is actually worth $100. So it's not actually worth um, buying because it's not undervalued. But now let's say that, and this is where the, my mistake with the chart comes in. Now let's say there's three possibilities. Let's say that it could be worth $150 if everything goes right. It could be worth $110 if things kind of go right, or it could be worth $90 in our worst case. So how do we get to these values? Well, we would use a valuation model like a discounted cash flow analysis, and we would run different scenarios or different forecasts and say, okay, well, if the business does this, then it's worth that. But if it does this, then it's only worth that. And so we can come up with different, I guess, scenarios and different valuations depending on what the future might hold. And then us as investors and as analysts, we have to use our intuition or our beliefs and our instincts to decide whether um, one particular outcome is more likely than another. But I'm going to keep things simple here. And we have three outcomes, all equally likely. So 33.33% chance that it, any one of these comes to reality. 
What we have here is two on the upside and one on the downside. Would you take this bet? And I'm hoping you would say yes, because in this case, there's two chances out of three, two opportunities out of three that we make money and only one that we lose money. Not only that, if we happen to get this, uh, this outcome, which is $150, the upside greatly outweighs the downside. And so this is where really good investors like Warren Buffett talk about asymmetric returns. And they talk about it um, in a sense of a strong portfolio. If you can find, let's say, 10 shares that offer you this return, um, risk, versus, risk versus return potential, if you can get 10 investments like this, you should take every single one of them. Because even though you might lose on one third of them and you only lose $10, you might, on one third of them, you might make a lot of money and on the final third, you might still make money, but just not as much. And if you can get all of them together in a diversified portfolio, you have a recipe for success. And that is what, ladies and gentlemen, professional investors are trying to do each and every day. To hit this home, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna draw one more line. I might use a different color. I'm gonna just draw some triangles. So let's say that we go, that's our upside. I might use a different color because that's not very obvious. Let's go back to trusty black. So again, this is not very obvious, but you can see I've shaded a triangle here that is black. And then we can look at the other triangle, which would go more like this. Now, in this case, I might just make this red so you can see what I'm talking about here. It's very poorly drawn, Owen, but you get the idea. What we have, as I rub them out, is two triangles. And one triangle is a lot bigger than the other. So we have a black triangle here, which looks to be shaded significantly more than the downside. And this is just a graphical illustration that shows you the upside is so much more than the downside. So if we know the probabilities and we know the valuations, we can set ourselves up for success, even if it doesn't happen overnight. Maybe it's in one year, maybe it's in five years. Remember, nothing is certain. But if we can do this with our investments and our portfolio, we're setting ourselves up for long-term success. That is an asymmetric return profile because it is not the same on either sides. It is one side greater than the other. And in this case, it's a favorable return profile. So we're going to talk about how you can calculate your own valuations don't worry, this is the last theoretical uh, tutorial. The rest of them are in a spreadsheet. We're going to be using real life case studies and we're going to apply some real life valuations. So I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.